Hello my shimmering stars today I Shoreya Grover welcome you all to this amazing platform of PW Gulf students I welcome you all to your achievers batch and today we are going to start with ultimate recap session for the chapter chemical bonding yes students you heard it right we are going to cover the complete you know chapter of chemical bonding in this particular session we are going to start from the initial topic of chemical bonding and we are going to cover each and every segment over here so i guess you all ready for this particular class yes students okay so let's start this class with a beautiful smile now ma'am how are we going to cover this class what are the topics we are going to cover today so students over here you can clearly observe i have written all the topics one by one that we are going to proceed so initial topic that we will be starting with is going to be your fossil and lewis approach towards chemical bonding the next part students that we shall be doing will be octet rule and the tendency to acquire the noble gas configuration in octet rule we will be understanding in depth about lewis dot structure as well we will be looking up to the limitations of octet rule and then we will be proceeding towards the topic formal charge the next segment students will be about electrovalent or ionic bond further topic will be about factors favoring the formation of ionic bond in this we are going to understand about fasan's rule that means covalent character in the ionic compounds then we will be seeing about lattice enthalpy everybody after that students we shall be understanding about covalent bond okay here we will be now uh, focusing upon the topic of lewis structures which we shall be covering in the lewis uh, approach towards chemical bonding also then we will be looking for uh, further to the topic of valence shell electron pair repulsion theory let me write it over here it is vasper theory that is written over here right okay so we'll be understanding this in depth then the most important one the valence bond theory after that the hybridization concept in detail with geometry with different hybridizations with different questions a lot of questions yes then comes out to be molecular orbital theory and we will be understanding how electronic configuration is written for the case of molecules how energy level diagrams are created yes students after that students we shall be focusing on the hydrogen bond even over here we'll be understanding about the bond parameters as well yes so let's start with the initial segment of ours with the initial topic of ours that is going to be the cosel and lewis approach towards chemical bonding see students uh, if i'll talk about this particular class this particular session today we will be covering the complete chapter in this ultimate recap part that means it is a kind of a revision it is a kind of a recap so i guess you all have studied this chapter before but yes if you have not done no need to worry i will be telling you each and every stuff over here but yes you have to prepare your notes now the notes that you are going to prepare over here is going to be a summary type notes which before exam you can read out and it will help you a lot yeah but yes let me tell you one thing you need to practice more and more questions we are not practicing questions over here we'll be understanding the concepts over here so for practice you need to take out your books you need to solve each and every question after the session and it will be really really helpful for you all yes everybody okay now the very first initial thing before starting this topic also that why there is a need to create a chemical bond why there is a need to establish a chemical bond or a bond between the atoms yeah many of you will, uh, will say ma'am due to um, the stability in order to attain stability students you say this word stability but what actually stability how do you define you know stability what are your perspectives in order to determine stability do you think the bond length do you think the bond order now you will say ma'am bond order we have not heard about it no need to worry this is what i'm saying is you are saying chemical bond is uh, created in order to attain stability so what is the basic reason that why we use the word stability we will be understanding that also in this particular class chemical bonding if i uh, speak about what is a chemical bond how a chemical bond is created if i'll say that one atom is you know um experiencing some kind of force with another atom 
that creates a bond over there now that bonding can be ionic that bonding can be covalent or the coordinate one that depends upon which kind of a bond is created that depends upon the modes of chemical bonding but what actual is a uh, chemical bond is something when you know two atoms experience some kind of a force now that force can be electrostatic that basically can be seen by sharing of electrons right so there can be different aspects that can be based upon the electronegativity difference electronegativity you have heard in the previous session yes or not if not go and see that one also so basically we are going to understand about chemical bonding but we should know what is a chemical bond basically creation of a bond by either attraction by sharing by any of the concept by transferring of electrons yes okay now before moving on to this concept again there are some basic key concepts that a chemistry student should know yeah because this thing you are going to get in your ncert but the things which i am telling you is are very very basic things which we generally don't focus upon we just start to you know uh, go through the syllabus and we say that no we have to just complete the syllabus but in actual we need to experience chemistry we need to understand chemistry now you you know basically what is a chemical bond but what are the modes of chemical bonding how a chemical bond is created we should also know that yes before moving on to the theories we should know how a chemical bond is created ma'am so let's understand that first let's write down the modes of chemical bonding yes everyone yeah so over here i'm going to write the modes of the modes of chemical bonding the modes of chemical bonding what are the modes of chemical bonding how a chemical bond can be created ma'am a chemical bond can be created by transferring of electrons or by sharing of electrons yes you are right so the initial method i can say is either by transferring or by sharing so by by transferring of electrons we see that yes a chemical bond is created again and again repeating i'm not talking certainly about a particular bond no i'm talking generally about a chemical bond the second way is to create a chemical bond is by sharing of electrons by sharing of electrons right now students now so students see when we are transferring electrons basically that creates an ionic bond that creates which kind of a bond ma'am an ionic bond when there is a sharing of electron students there creates two kinds of bonds now what are the two types of bonds that are created by sharing of electrons ma'am that is either students your covalent bond either it is your covalent bond or it is your or it is your coordinate bond ma'am which type of a bond coordinate bond now what are these bonds ma'am can you explain in depth yes why not see if i talk about by transferring of electrons let's take a general case of nacl let's take a general case of nacl how nacl structure is created nacl basically students contain two types of ions in it one is a cation one is a anion na positive cl negative now how na positive is created how cl negative is created we should also know this then only nacl will be created yes let's understand this see students sodium basically has one electron in its outermost shell and chlorine basically has seven electrons in the outermost shell yes sodium has you know one electron chlorine has seven electrons yes so over here if i'll say that sodium transfers its electron to chlorine what will happen this is transferring of electron yes ma'am but how it is going to do ma'am it occurs in steps the very first is formation of a cation how let's write them let's write down step by step formation of formation of cation what is the cation now if you don't know this also cation is something which has a positive charge on it right now see sodium basically has an atomic number 11 with an electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 and 3s1 
टू प्लस टू फोर फोर प्लस सिक्स टेन टेन प्लस वन इज इलेवन नाउ वॉट इट डज इज इन ऑर्डर टू बिकम स्टेबल इन ऑर्डर टू अटेन एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कंफिग्रेशन विच हैज कंप्लीटली फिल्ड और बिटल्स Now what is completely filled orbitals over here you can see it is 3s1 s is holding one electron it is not paired it is unpaired no it is not completely filled no so that means if it is losing one electron it will attain a configuration in which it has complete octet complete electronic configuration so it loses one electron and attains a state of na positive now you will say ma'am why not any negative why na positive let's explain this If I am a neutral species, I have equal positive and a negative charge. When negative goes away, I will be left with positive. So here, Na is positive now. Okay. Now what happens is this electron is further gained by chlorine. Chlorine basically uh, has an electronic configuration. Atomic number seventeen has seven electrons in the outermost shell. So chlorine basically is going to accept this electron and will create Cl negative. Now Cl negative holds eight electrons in the outermost shell. So now this Na positive and Cl negative, what they will do? There will be electrostatic force of attraction between both of them, and they will create your NaCl, right? Na positive Cl negative will combine, and then Cl will be formed. So this is what is transferring of electron. Sodium has transferred his its electron to chlorine. if you have to understand this through the help of lewis representation students you can say this is your sodium holding one electron chlorine as it has seven electrons in the outermost shell so this is donating is not donating basically it is transferring electron donating is a different word it's transferring its electron to the chlorine creating an ionic bond between ions between cations and between an ions this is your cation and this is your anion yeah clear okay now let's talk about sharing of electrons where we have a covalent bond and a coordinate bond covalent bond in other terms is referred to as the sharing other terms is sharing and it is equal sharing not in not i would say not equal sharing but yes sharing by two atoms this is would this would be the more appropriate way sharing between two atoms and both the atoms are sharing their electrons for example if i have a i have b both are sharing their one one electrons and creating a bond that is what is covalent but in the case of coordinate there is a sharing but only one electron sorry only one atom is sharing is sharing its electrons is sharing electrons with the another atom that's why i told you that is between the two atoms in which both the atoms are sharing and over here in coordinate only one atom is sharing between and with another atom for example if i have a if i have b and b has two electrons so it is going to share with a as well this is what is the coordinate bond formation clear everybody this is the everybody this is the very basic things starting with now my very first part over here is cosell and lewis approach chemical bonding towards chemical bonding See, Cosell and Lewis were the first to provide some logical explanation to valency, which is based upon the inertness of the noble gases. Let's understand them in depth. Basically, they told us about the octet rule. Now, what is an octet rule? Tendency to acquire the noble gas configuration. What do you refer to as the noble gas configuration? What are the noble gases? Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon. Right? These are noble gases. In order to attain that condition. is oct octet rule if something if an atom attains that condition basically it is stable because its octet is complete what is an octet octet over here is referred to as eight electrons now you will say ma'am what about helium helium has two electrons no so it doesn't has any octet yes for the case of hydrogen and helium we will be saying that in order to attain a stability their duplet should be complete but for rest of the uh, elements their octet should be complete clear now it has been observed that atoms of the noble gases have little or no tendency to combine with each other with atoms of other elements now it means that these atoms must have a stable electronic configuration that's why it is happening so they are saying these elements that means noble gases have eight electrons now configuration general configuration you very well know ns2 np6 except helium i already told you which holds atomic number 2 that means 1s2 configuration has two electrons in the outermost shell so that 
if it has to become stable it will it is basically the duplet right so this is what is octet rule that's why molecules want to become you know want to create a bond that's why so that they can either share electrons either transfer electrons in order to attain this octet in order to complete this octet rule clear everybody yes okay okay now starting with ma'am uh how basically is lewis structure represented lewis dot representation let's do, do that as well lewis dot representations see in the case of lewis dot representation it is very simple you have to just show the valence electrons you have to just represent the valence electrons that's it now what are valence electrons students if you don't know valence electrons are those which are present in outermost shell which are present in outermost shell that are referred to as the valence electrons let's talk about them one by one in detail so if i'll talk about hydrogen it has an atomic number 1 so it is represented as like this because it has 1s1 configuration one electron in the outermost shell so it will be represented like this let's talk about helium atomic number 2 configuration is 1s2 uh outermost shell is the first shell it holds two electrons so helium will be represented like this yes everybody if i'll talk about the next one we have lithium atomic number 3 it is 1s2 2s1 so over here outermost shell is second shell which holds one electron so it will be represented lithium and an electron like this let's talk about the next one if i'll talk about beryllium with atomic number 4 it is 1s2 2s2 outermost shell contains again two electrons over here so it will be represented as like this yes let's talk about boron boron has an atomic number 5 it is 1s2 2s2 2p1 so it has basically how many electrons now many of the students you know uh, just you know they do it wrong why because outermost sh uh, shell is second shell two of sn one of p3 electrons so boron is represented like this three electrons with dots right the next part you can take a general example carbon atomic number 6 1s2 2s2 2p2 2s2 2p2 four electrons so carbon holding four electrons right next is nitrogen with atomic number 7 so it is 1s2 2s2 2p3 nitrogen holding how many electrons 2 plus 3 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 yes I guess this is now clear to each and every one of you. How do we represent elements? Yes, now you can do the Lewis dot representation. Yes, and molecules. When I will be coming, I will be letting you know about the formal charge, creation of bonds, sharing of electrons. We'll be doing one by one, step by step. Let's start, students, about the limitations of the octet rule. What are the limitations of octet rule? See now, there are certain elements which either has more than eight electrons. The central metal atom I am talking about. either it has more than 8 electrons or it has less than 8 electrons or it has odd number of electrons now octet is 8 no if it has a odd number of electrons that means it is not octet its octet is not complete so there are some exceptions starting with the very first is the incomplete octet of the central metal atom that means uh, it has lesser number of electrons it does not contain 8 electrons it has less than 8 let's take some case of becl2 let me explain you now with the help of lewis dot structure only it will be more helpful see beryllium i now only told you that it contains two electrons in the outermost shell so it will be represented like this why 1s2 2s2 2s2 two electrons chlorine if i'll talk about contains seven electrons so it is represented like this see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 similarly this chlorine 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 now see students chlorine basically is sharing this one electron and creating a bond this chlorine also sharing this electron creating a bond but let's see about beryllium now beryllium contains how many let's create this again beryllium contains how many 1 2 3 4 how many electrons 1 2 3 4 4 beryllium central metal atom holds four electron chlorine how many 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 let's see this chlorine 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 <laughs> central metal atom does not hold the eight electrons that means its octet is not complete so it is an exception you can clearly observe and this is also the representation of lewis dot structure clear so that means they are saying that in some compounds the number of electrons surrounding the central metal atom is less than 8 yes this is especially the case with the elements having less than four valence electrons example is lcl beh2 bcl3 becl2 clear everybody next is 
they have also given you the case of BECL2, which I have drawn over here. And uh, yes, they have given you many cases. Let's talk. This is the case of BF3. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons in the case of boron. Less than 8. Right. Let's see over here. They have told you this thing only. That lithium, beryllium, boron has 1, 2 and 3 valence electrons only. And there are some compounds other than that as well. A ALCL3, BF3. It also has less than 8 electrons. The central metal atom holds less than 8 electrons. They are talking about, you know, the valence shell. Boron basically has 3 uh, valence electrons. No, So, it is creating 3 more bonds. That means 6 electrons. That means it is less than 8. Right? Now comes the next exception. That is odd electron molecules. Now, what is odd electron molecules? An atom such as NO and NO2, it is seen that when we count the electrons for the central metal atom nitrogen, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. How many electrons ma'am? 7 electrons which is an odd number. Odd numbers. So, octet to duplet is an even number. So, it has an odd number of electrons hence again it is an exception. It is seen in the case of NO and NO2. Is it clear to each and every one of you? Yes everybody, that is great. Next is the expanded octet, the third exception, is when it has more than 8 electrons. More than 8 electrons. Now, the example which I can give you is of PF5. Let us consider. I am giving example over here. See, phosphorus comes under nitrogen family. So, it will have 5 electrons in the outermost shell. And fluorine basically will have 7 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 2, 3, 4. 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now see. They are creating a bond like this. Yes. Just see. Fluorine completing its 8 electrons. Fluorine completing 8 electrons. Fluorine completing 8. Fluorine completing 8. Fluorine completing 8 electrons. But what about phosphorus, ma'am? See over here. How many electrons? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 electrons, ma'am. More than 8 electrons. So, this is again an exception. This is again an exception. So, it is told that in some compounds, the number of electrons surrounding the central metal atom is more than 8 due to availability of 3D orbitals. Uh, which is the incomplete octet of the central metal atom. Some of the examples of such compounds they have given you, PF5, SF6, H2SO4, IF7 also. Okay, these are the examples. Right. The next ex exception is, see, octet rule said that uh, the noble gases cannot create bonds with another elements. But yes, there was again an exception. XeOF2 was created. Even compounds of krypton were created. So, this is one more exception of that. Okay, that Xe and krypton, xenon and krypton can form bonds with uh, fluorine and oxygen. But octet rule used to say that noble gases cannot do that because it has 8 electrons in the outermost shell. So, that it cannot create a bond. Yes, this was again an exception. Moving on to the next part students. Now, we have what is the formal charge? What do you refer to as the formal charge? See students, formal charge is the factor based upon pure covalent bond formed by sharing of electron pairs equally by neighboring atoms. How you can calculate formal charge? See students, formal charge is basically a charge on a particular atom. Formal charge is calculated as, you can say, valence electrons minus the bond pair electrons minus the lone pair electrons by 2. Everybody first of all write this down. I will tell you there is one thing more over here. Everybody but first write this down. Take a minute, write this down students. Written everybody. Okay, even you can write this over here. The bond pair electrons. That means the shared electrons. Yeah, one thing students, please correct it over here. It is minus lone pair electrons. You can say that non-shared electrons. So that you won't get confused. Minus bond pair electrons. That is the shared pair of electrons. Okay, by 2. You have to divide the bond pair of electrons by 2. Clear everybody? Clear? This is by way how you can calculate the formal charge on the atoms. Now students, let's talk about the next part that a chemical bond can be further divided into various types. See, the very first is when there is a bond between electropositive and electronegative element or uh, between atoms, it is ionic bond. That means between a cation and a anion, that is an ionic bond. Between two electronegative atoms is a covalent bond where we see the sharing of electrons. And metallic bond is seen between, you know, 
the kernels and the free electrons. Metallic bonding, we will be understanding in depth in the solid state chapter. But yes, for just for your knowledge sake, I've told you, metallic bond is, is created between kernels and the free electrons. Next part is, chemical bond are further divided into interatomic bond and the intermolecular bond. Interatomic bond basically is between atoms, intermolecule is between the molecules, right? Now, interatomic uh, bond is basically strong in nature, while the intermolecular ones are weak in nature. They are ionic, covalent and metallic, which are strong, but the weak ones are hydrogen bonding and the wonderwall bond. Wonderwall bond is the least, I would say, which has a strength, it is basically the weakest one. Hydrogen bonding, we will be understanding in depth as well. Yes, so these are based upon the strength, interatomic and the intermolecular. Now, let's start with the ionic bond over here, that is the electrovalent bond. What is an ionic bond? When there is a strong electrostatic force of attraction between two oppositely charged ions, that means between an, between cation and an ion is an ionic bond. Yes, everybody, it is. So, the strong electrostatic force of attraction between two oppositely charged, a positive and negative, which are formed due to transfer of electrons from one atom to the another. Now, only we have seen there is a transferring of electrons. That is basically an ionic bond or also referred to as electrovalent bond. Next part, electrovalent bond is not possible between similar atoms. Why? They don't have any, uh, you know, because uh, this type of bond requires two atoms of different types, different nature. One atom should have a tendency to lose and another one should have a tendency to accept. If they both have a tendency to lose, then how a bond will be created? Yes? Now, what are the factors, students, that affect the formation of an ionic bond? We should understand that. The very first is ionization energy. This you have, you know, started in your third chapter as well. But yes, let's see this out. See, basically, it is the amount of energy required to remove one electron from the outermost valence shell of the isolated gaseous atom. Amount of energy that you have to give so that electron can be easily removed out. This is what is ionization energy. Yes, let's see. Amount of energy required to remove an electron from the outermost orbit of isolated gaseous atom to form a cation is ionization energy. Yes, it is an endothermic process. Ne now, they have told you, see, uh, there is less ionization energy when there is a greater tendency to form the cations. Clear? If you have to see the more ionization energy, they will have the lesser charge as you can clearly see. Now, the next part, electron affinity, amount of energy given to electron to enter into the outermost shell. Yes, okay. Amount of energy, now, now this can be explained in two terms. Amount of energy given to electron is electron gain enthalpy. Repeating again, amount of energy given to electron in order to enter is electron gain enthalpy. And amount of energy released when electron enters is electron affinity. Electron affinity and electron gain enthalpy are negative of each other. We have done this in depth in third chapter. Amount of energy released when an electron is added to an isolated gaseous atom to form a negative ion is called a ion. Now, in the first case, we formed a cation. In this case, we formed a ion. And the bond between the cation and ion is ionic bond. Yes? Okay. Now, they have told you again the order. Higher electron affinity will be the one of which forms a greater tendency to form ions. And it has a lesser ionization energy is one for the forming of greater cations. Next comes lattice enthalpy. Before moving on to the lattice enthalpy, let's talk about Fazan's rule. Ah, oh, okay. What is Fazan's rule? See, students, Fazan's rule basically tells you about, you know, the attraction of distortion of the anion towards the cation. That is what is Fazan's rule, you know. If we have a positive charge and there is a negative charge and it is somewhat attracted in such a way that we feel that its geometry is distorted. So, it assumes to be like they are sharing electrons. It assumes to that they have a covalent character, but they don't have, it is basically just the attraction, not the sharing of electrons is Fazan, Fazan's rule. So, it is basically attraction or the distortion of anion towards the cation that leads to the formation of your bond over there is your Fazan's rule. Okay, students. So, over here, you should always know the small cation, larger anion, higher charge, creates a covalent compound that is stronger, creates a covalent character that is stronger. So, whensoever they'll ask you the order for covalent character, just see it should the cation should have a smallest charge. An ion should have a larger charge. You know, not the charge size. Smaller size of cation, larger size of an ion and high charge. 
If it has a high charge, it has a high covalent character. Great. Okay, now starting with lattice enthalpy. What is lattice enthalpy basically? Lattice enthalpy. Enthalpy is heat. Heat required in order to break a bond or heat required in order to create a bond. There are two various things. So basically, lattice enthalpy in case of an ionic solid is defined as energy required to completely separate one. For example, one mole of NaCl. Energy given in order to separate NaCl into Na positive and Cl negative is lattice enthalpy. It is basically students again measured in kilojoule per mole. <coughs> The next part, lattice enthalpy depends upon various factors. See students, lattice enthalpy, lattice enthalpy is directly proportional, to, sorry, inversely proportional to size. See, when there is, you know, small size, atoms are close to each other, you have to provide a lot of lattice enthalpy because they have a strong force of attraction. So, lesser the size, higher the lattice energy. If the size is bigger, you can provide a lesser energy, the bond will be broken up, right? So, lattice enthalpy is inversely proportional to size. And is directly proportional to bond. Sorry, and again is directly pro inversely proportional to bond length. More the bond length, lesser is the lattice energy you can give. Lesser is the bond length, more the lattice energy you will give. Clear everybody? Clear to you? Yes. Very good. And also it is directly proportional to bond order. What is bond order? The number of bonds created. For example, if a single bond is holding a particular atom. Okay, and there are three bonds holding a particular atom. If three bonds are holding, the atom is close, size is small. So more amount will be given is so more the bond other less will be the uh, size and uh, lattice enthalpy will be more let's see the next part covalent bond you already know it is basically the bond created when the electrons are basically shared by sharing of electrons is the creation of a covalent bond example you can take up ch4 if you don't know let's take an example carbon contains four electrons in the outermost shell hydrogen contains one one electron in the outermost shell right so this sharing of electrons over here in order to create you know, bonds over here is what is covalent bond, sharing of electrons. Now, students, comes the most important topic that is the Vasper theory, valence shell, electron pair repulsion theory. Right? This is referred to as your Vasper theory. Yes. So, basically, they say that what are the postulates? The shape of a molecule depends upon the number of valence shell electron, that is, the pairs around the central metal atom. Okay, now it has certain rules, students. Valence shell electron pair repulsion theory has certain rules. Now we are going to solve some questions. Everybody, just take a sheet of paper, write down this initial postulate, and then we will be proceeding towards the question segment. Students, one more thing. There are so many questions on valence shell repulsion uh, theory. But yes, before that, I would say that first of all, we shall cover the valence bond theory and the hybridization. Then only you will be able to understand more in depth about valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Why? Because it basically tells us about the electronic electronic repulsion that due to the presence of lone pair of electrons, the shape comes out to be different. So, if we know the normal shape, then only we can determine this, right? So, first of all, students, let's understand about the valence bond theory, everybody. Let's start with the valence bond theory and then the hybridization concept. Okay. So, starting with the valence bond theory. Now, valence bond theory, that is the VBT theory, what it explains us, let's understand with the help of a diagram. See, VBT basically explains about us, about the concept of overlapping, okay. See, for example, if you have two 1s, 1s orbitals, okay, this is of hydrogen we are considering, this is 1s, 1s orbitals of hydrogen. They are overlapping. Now, if they are, you know, they are present at, at a far distance, so the distance between their centers is referred to as the radius, right? So, they are present at a far distance. So, over here when they are present at a far distance, there shall be some kind of an attraction forces. So, when they are at a far distance, the radius is this much. Okay. And when they are coming close to each other, when they will come, they will approach close to each other, what will happen? Their radius will, you will see, they are, their radius will increase, they are coming close, but their potential energy will decrease. Potential energy decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. A point arises where they cannot now come more close to each other. Why? Because each hydrogen atom contains one, one electron and they will repel each other. So, they are coming closer. Now, this is at a point where they cannot come more closer. So, that means this is that point where they cannot come more closer. So, this is basically the bond length. Now, what is the bond length? The distance between the two atoms radius, right? So, they cannot come more closer. Let us consider. Now, they cannot come more closer. So, this is basically the bond length, right? So, this is the point where potential energy is very, very low. And this is bond length. After that, what happens? Repulsion is more. So, the potential energy increases. This is the graph, right? 
so the basically this explains us about the overlapping concept in detail yes when two hydrogen atoms are at infinite distance from each other there is no interaction between them and therefore enthalpy of the system is assumed to be zero in that stage as the two atoms start coming each other potential energy continues to decrease ultimate stage arise, arises where enthalpy of the system becomes a minimum and hydrogen atoms are said to be bonded in each other creating an overlapping creating a bond yeah so now students before uh, understanding about overlapping let's understand about orbitals see students in order to understand about orbitals you should know s orbital basically it is spherical in shape p orbital is dumbbell in shape like this if it is drawn on the uh, this is x axis this is y axis so this is your py this is positive negative what is positive negative they are telling you about the directional properties next if it is drawn on the x axis like this positive negative this is px orbital with what is pz orbital if it is like this drawn on the z axis positive negative this is your z axis so this is pz p orbital is dumbbell in shape holding three of uh, the orbitals talking about the d orbitals it is of five types dxy dyz dzx the x square y square and dz square see students this is the ultimate recap session so i'm not going in depth because the things that you require i'm telling you that now see dxy if i'll draw dxy if this is x axis y axis it is drawn in between the axis and this is double dumbbell this is positive this is positive this is negative negative let's talk about dyz if it is y it is z again in between the axis this is positive positive negative negative let's talk about dzx xz in between the axes again positive positive negative negative let's talk about dx square y square if this is your x axis this is your y axis it will be created on the axis positive positive negative negative dx square y square is on the axis even dz square students is on the axis one such question they can ask you what is the nodal plane in the case of dz square so this is basically a cone is created over here what is the nodal plane where the probability of finding an electron is zero so here no as such nodal plane but yes a cone is created yeah now students will be doing the overlapping part let's see how overlapping takes place now when something is doing an overlapping it is either creating a sigma bond pi bond or a sigma bond see through overlapping we got to understand that three types of bonds are created sigma pi and delta now sigma bond basically is created by axial overlapping pi is created by sideways overlapping and uh, delta is created by the d orbitals okay so starting with what is axial overlapping that is creation of sigma bond let's take an example of 1s let's consider this is 1s 1s orbital when both the 1s orbitals combine with each other they are combining in the same plane let us consider this is your x axis they are combining in the same plane so how they are going to combine this is your first orbital second orbital in the same plane it is spherical so electrons are present in all directions x axis y axis z axis so this is the overlapping region that means this is the creation of a single bond sigma bond let's take another case for example this is your x axis here we are taking 1s here we are taking s orbital and we are taking px orbital positive negative see positive when combines with positive will create a constructive interference positive and negative will create a destructive see now it is px on the x axis when nothing is given on the axis you have to take z axis so when they are combining on the same axis this is the overlapping region this is sigma bond is created over here and in general it looks like this in general it looks like this clear this is again the sigma bond formation let's take the case of let's take the case of px and px for example really sorry students for example this is your x axis again this is your first px this is your second px when they both are combining this is positive negative positive negative when they both will combine how they are going to combine basically so this is the overlapping region this is the sigma bond created but in general how it is going to look like in general it is going to look like positive negative and negative they both combine and creates a positive region rest is negative in general it looks like this this is sigma bond formation through the axis now what is pi bond that is sideways overlapping 
that is sideways overlapping let's understand about this in depth now see in sideways overlapping we say that for example if this is your py this is your py and it is on x axis this is py this is py when the axis is different okay this is positive negative positive negative when this is again x axis this is first py this is, sorry let's take a general example no i'll create first and then i'll put the axis yeah so over here you can see there are two overlapping regions this and this this is creation of a pi bond when they are now see initially we were doing like this this was axial now sideways is like this from the top from the bottom this is creation of a pi bond clear clear let's talk about the delta bond formation now let's take the case of dx square y square and dx square y square right on the z axis this is z axis let's consider this is dx square y square so this is y this is x now dx square y square is on the axis no so this is y this is x orbital let us consider x axis so this is like this now see when there is an overlapping between them see if it is positive positive negative negative positive positive negative negative now see what will happen this positive will combine with this positive negative will combine with negative negative will combine with negative positive will combine with positive it is now bonding like this overlapping is like this in general overlapping is like this so this is creation of a delta bond always remember dz square won't form delta bond this was about overlapping students now overlapping basically uh, also explained us about hybridization how let's understand this how you have to calculate hybridization let's understand this very simple steps first of all calculate calculate total valence electrons calculate total valence electrons after calculating total valence electrons divide it by divide it by 8 when you are going to divide it by 8 you will get what a quotient and a remainder quotient basically is your bond pair electrons and remainder further you have to divide by 2 will be your lone pair electrons so when you will combine both bond pair electrons and the lone pair of electrons you will get a number that number will determine hybridization if the number comes out to be 2 hybridization will be sp if the number comes out to be 3 hybridization will be sp2 if number comes out to be 4 hybridization will be sp3 if number comes out to be 5 hybridization will be sp3d if number comes out to be 6 it will be sp3d2 okay the shape for sp sp is basically when two atomic orbitals are combining with each other let's see see when we are saying two hybrid orbitals when i am saying here write down number of hybrid orbitals number of hybrid orbitals just write down number of hybrid orbitals see now what are hybrid orbitals basically hybridization is the intermixing of orbitals no in order to attain a configuration now when number of hybrid or hybrid orbitals are 2 it is 2 it is sp hybridized okay and basically hybridized orbitals sp hybridized is somewhat like this okay so when it is two hybridized orbitals they are going to combine like this this is which kind of a shape a linear shape a straight shape holding which kind of a bond angle 180 degree so sp holds linear shape and 180 degree then comes 3 3 for 1s and 2p sp2 what sp2 how come for example uh, you can take the case of bf3 and if you don't want to do in that way it's very simple things students for example if you are talking about boron no basically now these smaller lobes are over here the smaller lobes of this are here this is basically the boron and it is creating uh, for example with fluorine so it is going to be like this a bond is created with fluorine p orbital so basically this is which kind of a shape a triangle so it is trigonal planar right sp2 hybridization if i'll go with 4 1 it is going to be for example this is carbon 1 1 over here so this is basically tetrahedral hybridization is sp3 tetrahedral is for example carbon is over here one bond over here one over here one over here one over here 
फॉर फाइव यू हैव ए हाइब्रिडाइजेशन ऑफ एस पी थ्री डी टू एस पी थ्री डी टू हाउ इज द शेप गोइंग टू बी लुक लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल सेंट्रल मेटल आइटम एंड फाइव बॉन्ड्स आर क्रिएटेड लाइक दिस एंड द डिस्टेंस ऑफ द एक्सियल एंड द इक्विटोरियल बॉन्ड्स आर डिफरेंट नेक्स्ट वन इज सिक्स दैट इज एस पी थ्री डी सॉरी सिक्स इज एस पी थ्री डी टू दिस इज एक्स एस पी थ्री डी फॉर दिस इट इज ऑक्टा हेड्रल शेप फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज सेंट्रल मेटल आइटम दिस इज द ऑक्टा हेड्रल शेप क्लियर this was about the diagrams of hybridization let's read about it see the concept of hybridization if i talk about was introduced by pauling the intermixing of atomic orbitals of almost same energy and the redistribution into equal number of identical orbital is hybridization let's take a case of carbon students in order to explain what is hybrid orbital carbon basically has an atomic number 6 so it is 1s2 2s2 2p2 four electrons in the outermost shell in 2s2 like this in 2p2 like this now let's talk about the structure ch4 it has to create a bond with four hydrogen so it should have four unpaired electrons so this one one electron will go over there this is ground state what will be excited state movement of electron it is like this now over here students they have different energies and if they have different energy they cannot overlap so in order to create a bond they are going to overlap with each other and will create hybrid orbitals how many hybrid orbitals four hybrid orbitals will be created when s and p will combine that is sp and it is basically like this when one s and one basically one p is combining so this creates an sp hybridized orbital due to which we are called hybridized now hybridized orbitals have equal energy see the orbitals of one and the same atom only involve in hybridization the number of hybrid orbital formed is numerically equal to number of orbitals participating in hybridization see if two are participating one is one s and one p two you will obtain now the order of repulsion will be in order of lone pair lone pair will have a greater repulsion then lone pair bond pair then bond pair bond pair okay now they will have almost same energy next part the orbitals formed in hybridization processes are called hybrid orbitals hybrid orbitals have same shape same energy just as i have shown you in the case of boron no three hybrid orbital in the case of two i have shown you sp2 linear shape sp linear shape not sp2 sp2 is in the case of bf3 next angle between any two hybridized orbital and atom is generally the same electron filling in hybrid orbital obeys the hund rules and the pauli exclusive principle one should have the spin so other the should have the opposite spin next hybrid orbitals involve only in the formation of see now it will only form sigma bond they are not involved in the pi bond pi bonds are never involved in the hybridization uh, concept the concept of hybridization was introduced to explain the shape of molecules bond angles bond length in the molecules a half filled or completely filled or even vacant orbital can participate in hybridization the hybrid orbitals are more effective in forming stronger bonds that leads to the formation of stable molecules everybody write down about the hybridization everybody just take a minute and write down about the hybridization if it is done students if it is done that's really well and good now see valence bond this i have already told you this is basically this formula this is basically valence shell electron repulsion theory now let me explain you what see when you are going through hybridization i told you that you know uh, the hybridization if you are getting a sum of 2 3 4 5 6 and that you can determine geometry but what if there is a presence of a lone pair see if it does not contain any lone pair it will follow the same trend uh, two orbitals will have sp three will have sp2 in that that way but when we see that there is a presence of a lone pair of electron the geometry becomes different the geometry comes out to be different let me show you one case for example if i have i3 negative let's take this case let's calculate total valence electrons now iodine basically is from a fluorine family so seven valence electrons into three now if it is minus one return you have to add one so this is 21 plus 1 22 now you have to divide this number by 8 right so basically it goes on the table of 2 right what is remainder 6 is remainder 2 is basically bond pair electrons 6 you have to further divide by 2 this is your lone pair of electrons now see you know that you will add 2 plus 3 this is 5 hybridization you have seen it is sp3d you will say that now it is simple iodine will create like this bond yes but we have lone pair of electron where we will place lone pair of electron always remember according to the theory valence electron pair repulsion theory lone pair will be placed where it you know experience the minimum repulsion so basically over here if you will see a uh, lone pair can be placed over here 
where it experiences minimum repulsion and over here and here so that means one iodine will be here one iodine will be here and now you have to determine the shape what what you are going to do you will keep your hand over here you will keep your hand on the lone pair which shape it is linear so that means its shape is linear not the shape which we have already told by hybridization so when there is a the presence of lone pair the shape comes out to be different you can see the seesaw shape there are various cases very different kinds of uh, shapes you can exhibit seesaw shape t shape bend shape let's talk about the case of water let's take one more example of the case of water see total valence electron always remember when you are applying valence shell electron pair repulsion theory for hydrogen take seven electrons okay now seven electrons there are two hydrogen and for oxygen it is six so 14 plus 6 is 20 divide this number by 8 2 8s are 16 4 is the remainder 2 is basically your bond pair electron 4 you have to further divide by 2 this is lone pair of electron this is 2 now 2 plus 2 sum comes out to be sp3 that is tetrahedral shape but not possible why because it has two lone pair of electrons so oxygen is the center metal atom one will be this lone pair another will be this lone pair this is hydrogen this is hydrogen now what is the shape keep your hand on this you are going to ob obtain a v shape this is v shape so it is v shape not tetrahedral v shape or even you can say bend shape so when there is a presence of lone pair the geometry becomes different you have to keep your hand on the lone pair the geometry will change clear everyone yes clear everyone just write it down students okay let's move on to the next part now we have molecular orbital theory molecular orbital theory basically is used for molecules just as we used to do the electronic configuration for electrons uh, for elements right in the similar way we are going to do for molecules now molecular orbitals are of two types that is you know um, one is going to be the bonding molecular orbital another one is going to be the anti-bonding molecular orbital the bonding one has the lower energy anti-bonding one has the higher energy now how you're going to create a, a molecular orbital see atomic orbitals combine to form a molecular orbital when you're talking about an atom you're going to use atomic orbital when you're going to talk about a molecule you're going to use a molecular orbital you have to fill the electrons in the same way i will tell you what is the electronic configuration let's read about it it was proposed by hans and mulliken to explain the paramagnetic nature of the oxygen molecule one more thing if they'll ask you to calculate the magnetic behavior if there is any presence of unpaired electron it is paramagnetic if there is a presence of a paired electron it is diamagnetic yeah now electrons in the molecules are present in various molecular orbitals right as the electrons in the atoms molecular orbitals are formed by linear combination of atomic orbital of comparable energy you cannot add 1s and 2p no 1s will combine with 1s 2s will combine with 2s 2p will combine with 2p but with same energies in order to form the molecular orbitals this means that the orbital can combine with another orbital okay uh, one is can combine with one is but not with two s because the energy is different okay now students this is the difference between the two molecular the types of the molecular orbitals one is bonding molecular orbital what it is bonding bonding molecular orbital what it is anti-bonding anti-bonding molecular orbital so bonding molecular orbital is formed by the addition and this is formed by the subtraction this is wave function when you are adding this is constructive interference this is when you are basically creating them this is basically a destructive one destructive one next it is formed by constructive interference it is formed by destructive interference lower in energy as compared to atomic orbital see what is constructive destructive let's understand this see when you are for example combining positive and positive positive and positive are overlapping this is constructive and if you are combining positive negative and over here it is positive negative you are joining negative and a positive this is destructive okay next electron density increases in the nuclear internuclear region here it will become a, in a larger amount here it won't like be like this it will decrease may or may not have an nodal plane always have a nodal plane now these are the representation see uh, i will tell you what is the electronic configuration how you have to write down see you have to calculate total electrons and if the total electrons is basically less than 14 so what is the way in order to write the electronic configuration the way is sigma 1s sigma star 1s sigma 2s sigma star 2s then comes pi 2p x is equivalent to pi 2p y sigma 2p z then comes pi star 2p x is equivalent to pi star 2 p y and last is sigma star 2 p z 
This is the electronic configuration for the case of the uh, molecules which have electron less than 14. See this sigma, sigma 2 is pi 2 px, pi 2 py, sigma 2 pz without star is bonding molecular orbital. With star is anti-bonding molecular orbital. Now the ones which have electron more than 14, what is the configuration? Sigma 1s, sigma star 1s, sigma 2s, sigma star 2s. Now sigma 2 pz, only this thing will interchange. Next pi 2 px is equal to pi 2 py, then everything is same. Pi star 2 px is equivalent to pi star 2 py and at last sigma star 2 pz. Clear? Everybody clear with this part? Clear, 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 clear everybody. That's great. Now students, see if you have to calculate the bond order, formula is half into number of bonding orbit, number of uh, bonding electrons minus anti-bonding. What are bonding one without stars? You have to count two, 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 like all this. And see, each p will contain two, two electrons because we have split the three p orbital separately. So each p will be containing two, two electrons. So you have to count the bonding one minus the star ones. You will calculate the bond order. Bond order is basically how many bonds are created. How you have to calculate the magnetic behavior? The magnetic behavior. If see, there is an unpaired electrons. If there is an unpaired electrons, basically it is going to be paramagnetic. If it is a paired electrons, then it is diamagnetic. And how you have to calculate it is mu, that is magnetic moment is equivalent to n, root of n, n plus 2 Bohr magneton. n basically is your number of unpaired electrons. Clear everyone, right? Now, students. The uh, energy level diagram for the case of the ones where electrons are less than 14. This is 1s orbital of one atom, 1s of another atom. Two atomic orbitals will combine to form two molecular orbitals. This is sigma 1s, this is sigma star 1s. This represents energy. It has lower energy, then higher energy, then higher. So this is the order. This is the basically energy order. It has least energy, it has the highest energy. You have to go in such a way. Now, this is for particular orbital. This is molecular orbitals. Here it will be 2s orbital, 2s atomic orbital. When they will combine, they will form molecular orbitals. This is sigma 2s. This is sigma star 2s. Then comes there are three atomic orbitals of P and three of another atom. So, 3 plus 3 6. That means six molecular orbitals will be created. Six molecular orbitals will be created. See now, basically, the lower one is pi 2 px is equal to pi 2 py. They have same energy. So, there are two boxes. This is for pi 2 px is equal to pi 2 py. Then it is single box for sigma 2 pz. Then comes again two boxes. Pi star 2 px is equal to pi star 2 py. Always remember, antibonding have the higher energy. So, pi star will have the higher one. Last will be sigma star 2 pz. You can learn in such a way 1, 2, 1, 2. 1, 2, 1, 2. Clear? Now for the one in which electrons are more than 14, let me show you that also over here. See, this is 1s, 1s. When 1s atomic orbitals, two atomic orbitals are combining, so two molecular orbitals are created. This is sigma 1s, this is sigma star 1s. Then it is 2s, it is 2s. This is sigma 2s, this is sigma star 2s. Then there are three p orbitals over here. Three p orbitals over here. They will create again six. But see, now here the scene changes. Here is sigma 2 pz initially. So here is one box that is sigma 2 pz. And then there are two boxes. Pi 2 px is equal to pi 2 py. Here it is again two. Pi star 2 px is equal to pi star 2 py. And here is sigma star 2 pz. Now, the order to remember this is 1, 2, 2, 1. 1, 2, 2, 1. Clear? These are the energy diagrams. Just fill the electrons just from seeing over here. Clear? Now, students, the last topic is hydrogen bonding, which you have already done in the previous classes also though. But yes, let's see about it. Now, when hydrogen is basically creating a bond with the more electronegative atom of the another molecule. Now, that more electronegative atom can be fluorine, oxygen and nitrogen. But do remember the hydrogen that is creating a bond should be attached to an atom which has a lower size. Right? 
for example it should have a lower size so you can see a bond between hf hf now hydrogen creating a bond with this fluorine is hydrogen bond between the fluorine of another molecule this basically bond between hf is a covalent bond and this bond is a hydrogen bond similarly you can see in the case of water so the bond created between hydrogen and oxygen is hydrogen bonding clear hydrogen bonding is also of two types intermolecular intramolecular right when it is between the molecules between two different molecules and when it is between a single molecule between a single molecule if you have to take an example of hydrogen bonding let's take an example of ortho nitrophenol see over here hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonded with oxygen so this is what is hydrogen bonding nitrogen oxygen fluorine are highly electronegative atoms when they tie to a hydrogen bond to form a covalent bond the electrons of the covalent bonds are shifted towards the more electronegative atom this partial positive charge hydrogen bonded atoms forms a bond with the more electronegative atom this is basically hydrogen bond and is weaker than the covalent bond already told you interatomic bond intermolecular bond intermolecular were van der waal and the hydrogen bonds between the molecules right clear students so students now we are ending our today's class over here i hope so all the concepts of yours were clear but yes again repeating we have not solved the questions this was just the clarification of all the topics that we have done now it's time for you to start solving the questions of this particular chapter so thank you so much my dear students now we shall be meeting in the next class till then keep smiling keep learning thank you so much and take care bye bye everybody